So they call up their Merrill Lynch guy. And they're like, okay, buy me ARC B, buy me the BlackRock ETF. I need some exposure. And the uh, price is popping. Since the ETFs have been launched now, the demand for Bitcoin is something like 12 times higher than the daily emission of Bitcoin. Right, so you're having a wall of demand meet a cliff of supply, right? So there's no supply. You can have a supply shock and a demand shock at the same time. So that's why the price is going to go bonkers on the upside. That's why I have this $220,000 price target because once this thing gets rolling now, once it gets to a new all-time high, every single chart of every single analyst on every single Bloomberg machine flashes a huge buy, buy, buy. You know, then this money starts to roll in and it's never been easier to buy Bitcoin. Remember, up until these ETFs, to buy Bitcoin was relatively difficult for the average retail buyer. But now it's as easy as buying any other stock. They can go to their Schwab, they can go to Merrill Lynch, anybody like that. And they can buy into a Bitcoin ETF. So this never been easier and the interest has never been higher. The fiat money world's never looked worse. Today we have Bitcoin maximalist Max Kaiser giving us an update on Bitcoin, the crypto market, and why BlackRock's entry into cryptocurrency was only the beginning. Kaiser says BlackRock's influence as an institutional investor is not a positive for the crypto market. He predicts a blindside in 2024 and says the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF was a massive error on the part of the SEC. Kaiser says we're headed for an unprecedented event as the printing of fiat money continues to drive entire economies off the cliff. Kaiser maintains a bullish prediction for Bitcoin, as the current price sits just over 70400 up almost $16,000 just in the last month. Kaiser discusses the collapse of the fiat money system around the world and points out the dollar is falling faster than we've ever seen. This is where he says Bitcoin will actually show itself to be a true form of money without influence from inflation or government's continuous printing. Let's get right into the latest interview with Max Kaiser, as he gives us his Bitcoin price prediction and why BlackRock's game plan will actually blindside the crypto market. Don't forget, our partners at Jamie Tree Finance have launched a daily five-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part, it's absolutely free, which will cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news that you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. If you were to understand that the financialization of everything has gotten to this point, uh, then you would understand that you can effectively orchestrate a rug pull on the whole house of cards. People who are feeling like they're broke, they're gonna get a lot broker because right. the purchasing power of that money is continuing to fall. It, it, all activists have a common cause and a common enemy. It started with Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street was an interesting protest because it went after the banks on Wall Street. And that was the first time to my knowledge where people, activists, we're looking more at the root cause of their mm. the issues that they were taking exception with. You know, if we can cut off the funding, then that would be an effective campaign. And that's true. But in the story of Wall Street and the money printers, of course, they can just print an endless amount of money. And so it's impossible to really wage an effective campaign. But in the case of Bitcoin, when you're effectively orchestrating a rug pull on the system because all your you are um you are defunding um the central banks by putting capital into bitcoin so that that capital ends up going into this unconfiscatable perfect money bitcoin and the folks that are in the business of printing all that money eventually just melt down they're, they're melting down anyway right uh but this would this would accelerate the meltdown which I think you need to do to, to, to right the ship, to get to a point where there's strong fundamental values upon which you can build a society. But right now we don't have that base to build a society on because it's all being printed into oblivion. Anybody with anybody who has access to a printer will print an inf infinite amount. And so you have a dysfunctional society and that's happening all over the world. So everyone around the world, every conflict, 
has a common enemy, and that is the central banking cartel. And we all have a common solution, and that is Bitcoin. So we, we're all working on the same the same fight at this point. There's, it's the what well, I guess I used to I call it the global insurrection against banker occupation. So we're under we're all living under banker occupation, and the global insurrection is Bitcoin. I want to be a, a more successful investment banker. I mean, I'm gonna have to get into a higher level of committing massive fraud, or I'm I'm I have to know more about how the legal system works so I can get the loopholes for the clients who are paying me the big bucks. So it's a down, it's an inward soul crushing experience to succeed in the fiat money world. With Bitcoin, it's the opposite. The more you learn, you know, the actually the better you feel about yourself and the better you feel about the prospects for others. It's a much more hopeful feeling that you get. Embracing an unyielding enthusiasm for the crypto realm, Kaiser confidently predicts that explosive growth is looming on the horizon, as BlackRock and many other crypto giants are doing just that. Kaiser reassures that a long-expected surge awaits, leading up to the highly anticipated 2024 halving event for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a short squeeze on the global Ponzi scheme, effectively. Like the, we live in a global Ponzi scheme. All banks are Ponzi schemes, right? Fractional reserve banking, which is a term that's pretty commonly understood, right? The bank lends out more than they have on their books, right? And, and the justification for this is that, well, you know, it's an acceptable risk because we're stimulating growth in the economy. So we're, but the fact is that they're exposed because if there's a run on the bank, then uh, the bank closes. And we've seen that throughout history this happens from time to and time might be happening again soon. could be happening they created the fdic federal deposit insurance corporation after a crash 29 and also sipic and other facilities uh government guarantee to backstop the system the federal reserve bank is meant to be a backstop to the system it's supposed to be used an extremist it's supposed to be there to to be a, a barrier against you know, essentially bank runs. That's like the one of the primary roles of the central bank. But under Gallon Greenspan, starting in the 1980s, it, the, you have the concept of the activist central bank, who is not there to be the lender of last resort, but the speculator of first order. Like nobody is speculating harder than the Fed. The Fed's balance sheet is more leveraged than any corporate balance sheet. Corp this leverage, like if you did an actual accounting of what's held by the Fed, they're uh, loan to ratio is probably in the many thousands of percentage points, whereas the highest leverage corporation in America might be, you know, at most, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, but it's nowhere near what the Fed is. The, the global economy right now is 300 percent debt to GDP. Right. So the GDP of planet Earth is roughly 100 trillion and the global debt's 300 trillion. So we're living in a 300 percent you know, debt to GDP on planet Earth is the highest it's ever been. That's number one. But these central banks, nobody's more leveraged than the central banks themselves because they always come back to the same thing. We're just going to print more money. And they always do. So now in the U.S., they printed, what, $34 trillion? They're printing, and they, they no longer report the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling has been removed. That's no longer an item in, that you see reported that's no, that politically there's nobody saying, like, we have to address the debt ceiling this week because we hit the debt ceiling. We have to raise the debt ceiling. They just said a few months ago that that's being removed. There is no debt ceiling, just like they just removed also the reporting of M3, which was a reporting of the money supply. They do M2 now, but M3 we got too scary. So they don't do M3 anymore. They do M2. I'm sure they'll take away M2. They, so the, the indebtedness of the bank is astronomical. And so when you buy Bitcoin, you're doing a rug pull on the central banks, essentially, because they still need at the base layer of their Ponzi scheme something. So the central banks are so leveraged in this thing. So, so, so Bitcoin is a rug pull on the global central banking system that is, in historically speaking, at no greater point of vulnerability ever in its history. It's never been more vulnerable than right now. It's never less well capitalized than right now. I mean, right, right. You can go to the like the games that are being played. That they don't just like, for example, Jay Powell just doesn't call up Jamie Dimon and send him a trillion dollars, right? That's not how it works. But what they do is they let Jamie borrow an infinite amount of money from the Fed at two percent 
and allow him to lend it back to the Fed at 3% <laughs> on the same day. That's that's a known operation with some fancy name. So that's they can't write the check to Jamie Dimon, but they put it under the machinations of a scheme like this that I just described. And they'll say that this is necessary for whatever reasons. But there's no this it's the same as just writing Jamie a check. And it's just outright corruption and fraud. The Bank of Japan, historically central to global currency dynamics, is on the brink of default, which could precipitate a global economic downturn. Max foresees a looming economic catastrophe driven by collapsing fiat money systems, rampant inflation, and bank failures. He suggests that a transition to a Bitcoin standard might be on the horizon as the world grapples with the impending crisis. He asserts that the promises made by the Federal Reserve and central banks have been hollow, leading to excessive money printing and a proliferation of poor investments. And with the aftermath of the recent inflation surge, Kaiser says this will not lead to a return to the status quo. He argues that the economy has spun out of control, with the US facing a mounting debt crisis. Kaiser presents two bleak possibilities, hyperinflation or a deflationary depression. In either scenario, the overall quality of life deteriorates. He notes the absence of viable solutions, indicating an even greater severity of the crisis. Interestingly, he points out how political figures are discussing Bitcoin as part of a potential solution, marking a shift towards a Bitcoin-centric financial framework. What do you think about the latest interview with Max Kaiser? And what are your thoughts on his prediction for Bitcoin heading into 2024? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.